Hello everyone, here we go, talking about uh, Ness's point of view, experience and expertise in microservices architecture. We're going to illustrate that today with a customer loyalty platform for NessAirlines.com, a company we invented just to showcase uh, the way we look at how this all works in modern technology. So uh, Ness is a, maybe I'll go back to say this, Ness is a digital engineering partner across verticals, industries and geographies. We've got startup clients working cloud-based and open source environments from day one, but we also have partners with decades of monolithic architectures hobbled by organic growth and absorbing new systems, which makes them really difficult and inefficient to manage. To be efficient, to get features to market quickly, we help them think in terms of microservices, the modern day way to decompose a big slow beast over on the left there into much more manageable, lightweight, uh, self-contained units of microservice. We're going to showcase a few of them here to show you how easily, uh, frequently, often we develop them in all kinds of different environments and scenarios. And this story is best illustrated, I guess, by how, how long and cumbersome it would take to create the features that we're going to show you now in a monolithic environment and run them side by side. I'm not currently sure we're going to be able to do that, but let's have a little talk about uh, how we see microservices in general. Not certain at the moment this is the right graphic to show that, but this is our point of view. We're convinced this is the best model for delivering software these days you know at its heart microservices are all about speed flexibility maintainability being able to remove and update with something better next year easier to unplug and then plug and play the next microservice that you've got and that might be you know next year's newer payment solution it might be a better dig digital signature logic it could be any any number of things if I want to deploy a new feature a microservices approach can be a lot faster because I can reuse existing microservices. They're often built to be repurposed easily in future. If I find a bug and I need to fix it, microservices architecture lets me just redeploy the microservice that has the bug rather than you know, in isolation as opposed to a whole monolith where there'll be a lot less testing overall. I want to try out a new version of a customer service on a few people. Um, do some A-B testing. Well, microservice lets me run multiple versions in isolation of a microservice at the same time and quickly to get the results to help me improve my architecture. So microservices in general there. This is uh, even more detail, which we're probably not going to go into when we need to. But one of the elements here is to make sure we understand that, you know, expertise in a partner to do this effectively, having done it before. It's a tough ask for a company to, to become a microservices architecture and culture in-house for the first time. Isn't it best you need a trusted partner who's done it before? Let's talk about our scenario, a use case that everyone can understand. This is how it's done on the JetBlue website. You know, it's a loyalty program. Join JetBlue. Earn points by spending money with us and get rewards from us. It's a frequently occurring bargain between buyer and seller, online and offline. And it's a good showcase for how we're going to talk through this today's scenario. So we're going to talk about, in this world, different and associated microservices, one for enrollment, one for collecting points, one for redeeming points, and then the kind of underlying microservice of communication in a, in a digital marketing context. Let's just talk about enrollment, a rough outline sketch of what we're going to do here. We need you to enroll in our program. This is a microservice. We need to collect some data. We need to store that data. We need to run a few business logic rules to validate the data before we capture it, and then you're enrolled. All of that is self-contained within a microservice, which we're going to show you here by filling it in. We're actually going to design one. Here's one left, here's the top to bottom, personal details, residential address, a bit of highlighted here in large. At the bottom of that, we've got three important uh, items. I'd love to receive a newsletter. I'd love to receive offers, and I agree to your terms and conditions, all of which have their own logic. Um, and we need you to accept them and then you enter a workflow once you're stored about how we're going to communicate to you thereafter and we can illustrate some of that here by the kind of flow behind our microservice uh, the enrollment goes first you know ultimately we're going to store your data in a database I think we're going to use Amazon RDS for the moment There's some simple business rules uh, within the validation they're form filling rules contained within the UI inside the microservice so you need to use the correct date format. If it's wrong, we'll suggest how you get it right. But we also could do lookups on people's age to reject people from loyalty who are under 18. If the program's only open to residents of the US and Canada, we may look up your IP address even to confirm you live there um, and explain the rules of why you can't join if you don't. Uh, then once you pass validation and that gate, the information is stored in our database. 
Um, and they're triggering those tick boxes about you fall into a timeline of, of marketing correspondence. I mean, we should do, you know, here's an outline of the microservice for uh, enrollment. We should do something similar for the other two or three we're going to, but we haven't done it yet. Um, we're going to, at the UI layer, the experience is well done. You've joined. Something's happened. It's good. You're now in. Um, and the, the, we'll, we'll tackle a little bit there, maybe get some more details about your favorites and behaviors so we can personalize content, which could be a different microservice. The information is now stored in this database and the rules apply. So after one day, you might get a welcome email. Look what you could do with us, now you're in. After 30 days, mostly of inactivity, we maybe remind you, we're looking forward to your first booking. After 90 days, you know, nothing's happened still, maybe we'll try and tempt you back to, to, to work and engage with us. As a valuable member, you'll get a discount off your first booking. And now we have to hook up the data from this into the, you know, the responses and people's into available flights, the inventory, the price information, and look at flyers' previous behavior, flights they've booked, destinations they've gone, offers they've looked at, to start to build up a picture in our data model that might you know, improve the way that we're marketing and the way that it's targeted. Um, right, next area, we're talking about booking a flight and redeeming, collecting some points by booking a flight. At the outline here, there's a you know the con concept of you want to go somewhere from and to and tick a box and you'll start to trigger the collection of points. This is a microservice, um, not Jet. Yeah, this is JetBlue again, telling you how they go about doing it and tempt you with a call to action of if you look down the bottom right here, the different levels of points, the different ways to do it, and the different qualifications, starting to explain the concept of collecting points. And then once you've collected them, the idea that you can use them as a currency to redeem them is also a microservice, um, which we're going to get into as we go through the build of this thing. Um, I'd say one thing worth saying here, you know, this plugs into the API economy and the future of loyalty across industries and partner ecosystems. Traditionally, as you see down the bottom right, I'm booking a flight, but I can cash it in with the Marriott Hotels, Avis rental cars, part of my connected journey. But who knows, in the future, a lot of this might start to overlap in a kind of Facebook world where, well, I guess Amazon do a good way of Amazon Prime, don't they? Where they're looking at stuff you bought with books, which now becomes your grocery shopping um, and even, you know, m movies that you've downloaded on Amazon Prime. It's like the whole your whole life could be rewarded by some of the integrations and offers if it does it so intelligently which we hope, of course, Ness Airways will do. If we move forward again to the next uh, microservice, which will be about redemption, this is the concept of looking at your available balance, seeing what you've got available, how you collected them, and then hitting that redeem now will trigger a flow, which will be about the uh, where can I use them, what can I spend them on, what do these points mean to me, and that, that can be a different microservice, all self-contained as we've done. That's kind of the story so far of where we got to with the... Uh, on-screen look and feel of, for the user flow and how there's technology behind it. Somewhere we need to start tackling that our microservice as opposed to our previous monolith, maybe there's an explanation required of what, what's different. We've got on here a nice logical vertical layering of the client layer, which is you know mobile, desktop, tablets, um, how that interacts with a web layer, which is a Node.js, AngularJS, uh, kind of responsive across all units how that then connects up to an API layer, a gateway, in fact, to get you through to the back end. We've got a lot of these spring elements in the way we're gonna do this, but they're obviously alternatives to do that. And then get us to our data layer, database, many different flavors, but we wanna talk at Ness about the most modern, common, useful, and easy to, to set up. Um, a simple way of organizing the diagram there would be how the, uh, the UI interacts with the, uh, the back end and into the database, how we're gonna tackle that. I'm not going to go in here now to the, the, the depth of what's in there because we're not entirely sure how much of this we want to communicate to our viewers, but there's a whole lot of uh, thought gone into how we're going to set this up and how this microservice uh, setup we're showing you is a very commonly occurring one and we're indeed experts in this area. Thanks.